Okay. Good afternoon. Teachers, administrators, proud families, friends, and of course, the graduating class of 2023. I'm honored to be with you here today to celebrate, reflect, and commemorate a significant milestone in the lives of the class of 2023. I'd also like to take a moment to recognize and honor those who cannot be with us here today, um, but we know what they're with us is strong to you. And to recognize the hard work and sacrifice of our ancestors that allowed us to gather here to honor the class of 2023. We know they're so proud of these graduates. And may they continue to protect them as they embark on their next journey. Now, I know a little bit about how you're feeling. Uh, 30 years ago, I was in your shoes. 30 years ago. Not that I guess in your past and gowns. And uh, as you can see, I'm going to show a slide in a second here. I was a little bit of a shy little time. I wore shorts to the ceremony. A little too cold today to wear shorts to the ceremony. But, uh, but you can see here, uh, I'm, I'm here with Principal Terry Dale, a very good man. His wife there were very close to, to me and the family. They, they, they rest in peace. And on the outside, I kind of gave a vibe of like, ah, it's just another day, you know? Another day. But on the inside, I was definitely feeling like a pretty powerful combination of things. <laughs> and I'm curious, guys, right, how you're feeling today. Is it excitement for what's ahead? Is it some nervousness for what's ahead? Is it some relief that you're done? Is it some sadness that you're done? Is it some gratitude for everyone here? This helps you to get to this point. And I remember feeling really overwhelmed because it was all of those things, right? Um, and maybe you're feeling all those things too, so that's, that's okay. But I also remember feeling that I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And feeling a little jealous of those who did. This guy decided to go to the maritime after I finished high school. Um, my dad worked in power systems in the mills, so I figured I'd do that too. Made sense to me, family thing. Then I had kind of a weird accident. I was playing football with one of my best friends, and I went to tackle him. And he wasn't wearing a shoe. And I tapped him around his legs, and his heel made a perfect match to the left side of my face. <laughs> he could wear a shoe if I would have been It gave me a tripod fracture, it broke my shoe bone in three places, and it cracked the base of my eye socket. Now, the doctors fixed it, it's not a big deal. The doctors fixed it all up. But they had to use some titanium metal plates to fix it, right? To get everything to hang in just a little bit. And it hasn't affected my life at all. Like, I don't sit out metal detectors in the airport at all. I, uh, when I go to the dentist, sometimes I think extra, and I go, that is all that stuff in your head. So I have to explain that. But otherwise, it hasn't affected me. But it did at the time, because I couldn't go to the Maine Maritime Academy because of the military reputation. Uh, and so, I kind of said to myself, well, what am I going to do? I'm not sure. So I turned to one of the great philosophers of the time, for wisdom, uh, philosopher Iron Man Tyson. <laughs> 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 the other quote that I love says, everybody has a plan, so you can punch them up. Right? And those are good words of wisdom because everybody is much to know, right? Um, life does that. And I think unfairly, some people take too many points to know, right? We all know a few people that are probably using the job too, right? It's the way that it <laughs> the rest of the show, nobody gets left out, right? Everybody gets punched in the mouth. So the question is, like, what comes next? And so, for me, I turned to my mom for advice after, after my test. Um, and <laughs> Um, but those two problems also allowed me to explore a different side of myself in the workplace. 
place. And I, I got an internship at Walt Disney Company and the Intel Corporation. So what seemed like complete chaos on the outside, the parents would go to shop and say, and, and everyone would go, where is John now? You know, um, actually behind the scenes was that at least a halfway logical sequence of the next right things. That degree helped me get my first job. Um, I've been blessed to work with some of the most innovative and interesting places that I ever could imagine alongside some amazing people. And again, my career just kind of strings together a series of next right things. But I didn't want to give school advice and career advice to tell you my life story. Um, I, I just wanted to recognize that for you, this really important day in your life, this is not only a milestone in your studies, it's a milestone in your life. And so on this day, I want to share with you what I see as four keys to a happy life from a completely unqualified expert. <laughs> <laughs> early qualifications living for 47 years, doing quite a few crazy things, bold decisions, and an unwavering confidence that even my mistakes would be one of my greatest assets because it would teach me so much. So here we go, four keys to a happy life. Number one, live your purpose. Now before you roll your eyes, I'm not talking about some grand purpose ahead of state or anything like that. It's, it's really about what we do every day that is expressed. Recording in progress. It's about our values. You know, we've all grown up up north. We've grown up here. We have certain values in this way. It's about respect. It's about humility, integrity. It's about honesty, loyalty, courage, and kindness. Now each of us places different emphasis on these kind of values, right? Like there's some probably some words that left out for you graduates, right? You're saying, well, what is this word? Those are the unique things that you're passionate about. These are the essence of what makes you unique. And I'm such a believer in this, I actually sat my family down and forced them to have a discussion about what are our shared values as a family. It was an interesting discussion. We never talked that level, right? But it was really good for us. And, and some interesting things came out. You know, believe, care. You can see here, we actually put it on a plaque. actually hangs in our living room. This is the stuff that we, we believe in. This is the stuff that we want to embody. Okay. Right? And we did this for two reasons. Number one, how in the world do we expect each other to know what we care about the most in terms of our values if we don't talk about it or write it down? And number two, let's have something to measure ourselves by. Right? On a day to day basis, how are we doing? How do we do this week on these values? How do we, where do we go wrong? It's never perfect. It's never anything about being perfect. It's just how can we do better? Right? Now, what I love, I was looking at like, each of you, and, and it's you're clearly ahead of me when I'm sure it's just allowing you a really good sense of what you want to do as it relates to your field of study and work. So you're raising wisely as it should, right? We, in the cosmetology field, we have future beauticians among us, making people feel great, making them feel beautiful and fresh. We all know how it feels to walk out of a barbershop or a salon, right? You walk out of the rest of the four years and feel great, feel fresh. In the medical field, we have future nurses among us, right? They're taking care of us and our loved ones during what is often the most difficult stressful times in our entire lives. We have future body medical professionals and there's new ways for us to live healthier and live longer. In the technical field, we have future engineers and construction managers that will build our future. We have future electricians and welders who will empower our lives, fabricate new products, and build our industrial future. In business and media, we have future business leaders among us. They're going to create new businesses that solve society's ever changing challenges. And future media leaders are going to give us the knowledge and information we need to build a better society. In liberal studies, we have talented actors and singers and dancers among us. We are grateful for their brave focus on the arts, because it's the arts that inspires us. And I see there are some of you that aren't quite sure yet. These are my people. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I'm 47 years old, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to do with it. But I have a message for you don't overthink it, you know? And don't underestimate yourself. Never be typecasting something that isn't you, either. be you. Yeah. If you ever feel intimidated, remember that everyone struggles with something. Academics come more natural to some people, social situations to others, emotional things to others. None of this defines you. It's up to you to define you. As Cody mentioned, like, as it's today, you're at an inflection point, a reinvention point. If you need it, use it. So the, the second point I want to make is get on the right bus. There's a lot of different things to be today, right? So my favorite was Coach Mike Krzyzewski from Duke. Uh, coach him for 42 years, Olympic basketball coach. He told this story. And Mike grew up in the city of Chicago. His mom had a great education. And when he was 14 years old, he was going to high school, so he had to go to a new school. And his mom at that point said, Michael, I'm going to do it for you. Make sure you get on the right bus. So he said, well, I've lived in Chicago my whole life. I'm going to know what the bus ride is. She said, no, 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 listen. You're going to meet a lot of new people starting today. Make sure you put good people on your bus. 
You're going to drive that bus for the rest of your life. And as you got other people's buses, make sure they're good people too. If they are, they'll help you go places that you never go wrong. And his mom's been gone for 25 years. He credits her with really getting him the best place in his life. And I agree that Grant is hanging with good people. Hang with people who make you better. And put in an effort to make the people around you better too. There's a greater chance of winning if you're around good or exceptional people. And lastly, if you've got new people to your bus, don't forget about the people already on it. Look around, maybe they're here today, right? Friends and family. Don't forget they know things, right? They've been driving their own bus for a long time, many of them. They know the rules of the road, you know. This is important because having the right people on our bus changes our limits. Good people push us to new heights. And listen, pushing limits means that you will get punched in the face. But failure won't be your destination. It'll be just a stopover as you find success. You're going to keep finding that next right thing. And the beauty of driving a bus for the good people is when you do get knocked down, you will never get up alone. The next point is enjoy the ride. Find joy in the process, not just the destination. Here's the cool thing about living your purpose is that it's lived every day throughout your life's journey. It's not a destination. Sometimes we feel like, ah, yeah. And I'm sitting there screaming, can you hear me back there? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Um, we often think that we'll be happy once we get to X, or once we've achieved Y, right? But the key is to find happiness in the day-to-day -day work of moving toward those destinations, right? For example, you may be thinking, once I graduate, I'm going to be happy. Or once our team wins that big game, I'll be happy. But the reality is, is that the joy... <laughs> the joy is in the practice. It really is. It's the day in, day out, work together with your classmates and your teammates. You've seen that, right? That is where the happiness lives. The process holds the magic, not the destination. And listen, if you get the process right, if you have the right people on your bus and you're living your purpose, you will reach that destination no matter how windy you have to get it. And lastly, the, the last point is to give generously and give often. Studies have shown over and over again that giving makes us happy. It's remarkable how much more you get back when you give. This is not just about money or charity. In fact, that's, that's a minority of the whole thing. It's, it's often what we think about. It's not that. It's much broader than that. For example, we give through our work. We mentioned beauticians bringing beauty, construction managers building new environments, nurses bringing health and comfort. And it's also about the things that make this place unique in my mind, in my heart, all well, not the main, up north. It's where people do good things for no good reason. We call them the little things, but they're actually the big things. You open that door, you say hello, you smile. Even if you don't know them, you say hello and you smile. Right? You pay that compliment. You carry those groceries. You share what you know with other people. There are so many ways to give. My favorite study on this topic is this. Researchers had between five and twenty dollars every single day to give to two groups of college kids. Right? One group of college kids got that five to twenty dollars a day and they could spend it on themselves. The other half had to give away that five to twenty dollars to any kind of charity they want. And you figure, like, well, the kids are going to buy whatever they want. It's probably happy, right? They have more stuff. But it's exactly the opposite. The people that were happiest were the ones that gave the money away. And whether they gave away $5 or $20, they had absolutely no value. Giving makes us feel good. Giving feels especially good when the human connection is associated with it. It's not about money, it's about contributing to society. It turns out this makes us feel happy. <coughs> so continue to do it. I know many of you are doing this already. Keep doing it. Give generously and often. You'll feel surprisingly good. One way I would love to give back is through a nonprofit that I co founded called Arkitab. Uh, we've been allowed to, it, well, this has really allowed me to reconnect with my home and with so many of the incredible people in ways that I'm so grateful for. We've achieved some important things, but we haven't yet achieved all of our own goals. And we're applying this framework to try to achieve those goals. We have the right purpose and values, we have the right people on the bus, ranging from our core team to the entire community of people doing positive things. We simply need to keep it up and never stop. Each of us are doing our part. Keep doing the next right thing, the next right thing, the next right thing. Indeed, graduates, the lesson that I've learned is that sometimes important hard things take more blood, sweat, and tears than you want. They're probably going to be in the perspective. The key is to persevere until it's a sufficient sequence of next right things. Sometimes for you alone, and sometimes for a whole community of people, deliver a bill for purpose. And that's what we're doing. You know, we're not there yet, and make no mistake. This is a region that is on the rise. So in conclusion, if you're in to take advice from a fellow starting graduate, welcome to the alumni club. The best metal place in this head. Very happy. Live your purpose, get on the right bus, enjoy the ride, 
give generously, give often, and then life punches you in the face. And it will. Do the next right thing. You're going to be okay. Congratulations to the first of your parents graduating class of 2023. We're so proud of all you've accomplished now. We can't wait to see you accomplish it anymore. Graduates, wishing you all the best.